Okay, so here's where we are today. We're going to try to be able to predict if a system's at equilibrium or not. And then that's one part. Then the other part is determining equilibrium composition again. So just more practice what we did last class period. And here's a kind of a complex example of, of what I'm talking about. But I mean, if you want to do anything, breathe, think, live, right? You got to get energy from somewhere. But it's a complicated mess of equilibria, right? To get your to get your energy. And I don't know. I just thought it was kind of interesting to see. But you know, all chemical equilibria means that you know the concentrations aren't changing over time. So we've got a lot of interdependent reactions going on there. But okay, and it it seems odd that something like this controls it all. I mean, one this is a very simple idea of products over reactants and their concentrations aren't changing over time. You get an equilibrium constant. So, but you can have far-reaching ideas and applications with it. Okay. So, let's take a little review with the symbol for the equilibrium constant being Kc. What does the C stand for again? C stands for Con concentration. concentration. And the units have to be mo not molality, mo molarity, big M, right? Moles over liters. What is the one and only way to change Kc? Marcus, what do you think it would be? There's only one way to change these equilibrium constants. You can Google what the equilibrium constant is for, you know, for uh, metabolism and you can get numbers for all this stuff, but there's only one way to change it, to change these equilibrium constants, ratios of products over reactants raised to their stoichiometric coefficients. What would it be? Oh yeah, definitely, if you change the reaction, but then you'd have a whole different, whole different reaction, a whole different equilibrium constant. Change the, so the T, well it is a T, change the temperature. Change of temperature changes the equilibrium constants. So if you're ever going to Google an equilibrium constant, you know, make sure the temperatures match. Here's a little review. The equilibrium constants for the below react, or sorry, the equilibrium concentrations are those. What's the value for Kc? Hey Zeus, what would you do to get this? What's the value for Kc? Yeah, set up. Is this an ice problem? No, right? Because they tell us what the answers are, right? So Bianca, KC would be what over what? Just put in the numbers for me. What would you put on top? What would you put on top? What number? 2.5. Okay. Is it just 2.5? Or is it squared, cubed? Squared. Okay. Then on the bottom, Vante, what would you put? Uh, well, here's your concentrations. Be the four to what power? See it? Yeah, to the second. And then everybody times? 2.5 to the third. Okay, what number do I get here? Oh, I still have a calculator. I guess we're going to have to have the lights on. Oh, yeah, well, I just know we have some, what's coming up, so I wanted to get to it. Divide by 16, divide by 2.5 to the third. Where's my Q button? There it is. So about 0.025 is what I got. Okay, so just a little, little review there. Okay, 0.025 is about what I got. So there's two types of problems that we're going to be messing with today. One is 
how do you predict if a reaction is at equilibrium or not? And if it is not at equilibrium, it's going to shift towards products, or it's going to shift towards reactants. And here's the answer. Calculate a QC. So I guess we got to start. Oh, Brad, what is a QC? Is it a reaction quotient? Yeah, it's a reaction quotient. <laughs> it's going to be a number. Okay? Think of it this way. If we, here's our KC, it's 0.025. What if I would have told you a different set of numbers? That's all this is going to be. I'm going to tell you a different set of numbers. If you get, and then you plug in those concentrations into your KC expression. If you get what number, you're at equilibrium? 0.025. That's the only option you have. If you get 0.025, you're at equilibrium. That's all we're going to do is we're going to plug in whatever concentrations they give us into the KC expression. Except we can't call it a KC expression. We have to call it a QC expression because we don't know if we're at equilibrium or not, right? So that's the whole idea, okay? But Well, Q, they're the same thing. It's just products over reactants raised to their powers. But whatever you get for QC, you compare it to KC. So they have to tell you what KC is. Otherwise, how do you know if you're at equilibrium or not? So they tell you what it is. And if they're equal, then you're at equilibrium. Okay. Are we going to shift towards reactants or products or generate more of one or the other? We're at equilibrium, so no, right? Just the things are going to stay as, as they are. But if you do the math and you get QC, Brittany, to be bigger than KC, then you have too much what? Yeah. Yeah, stay with, stick with it. Stick with it. Because remember, KC, everybody, is what over what? Products over reactants. So I always think of it the way Brittany answered the question. I always think of product. So if KC is too big, sorry, if I get a QC and it's bigger than KC, the number's too big, I have too much product. Right? Because that number's too big. Then everything is going to shift where? Yeah, it's going to go back to reactants. I have to get rid of those products. Right? And that's this way. Okay? So if QC isn't smaller than KC, then there's too much yes. reactant, and the reactant shifts the other way. I right, get rid of those excess reactants. Okay. Doesn't it go that way? Oh, I erased the uh, circle the same one again. Oh, my goodness. Okay. We In the last example, we found KC to be 0.025. Okay. This is what I was shooting for. That's why I jumped through that one kind of fast, because I wanted a number here. So it's the same reaction, except they give us some different concentrations. Is the system at chemical equilibrium? Right? So Marlena, what's the game plan? Yeah, set up that. Oh, we shouldn't write KC, though. We should write QC. OK. And Brittany wanted us to write it out, right? Fine. She feels better about that. That's my job to make everybody feel happy. Oh, I got a square, right? <laughs> and calcium squared. No, it is a good idea. And then I need hydroxide to the third. OK. Now, these are concentrations. What if they would have gave us moles? Now, there's a good question, right? Kelly, what if they would have gave us moles up here instead of big M? Can we plug those numbers down below? No. It has to, you have to tell you the liters somewhere, because this has to be concentration. It has to be moles over liters. So it always has to be moles over liters. All right, let's plug the stuff in. The calcium was 13.4. We got to square that. The calcium was 2.6. We got to square that too. 
And hydroxide was 8.9. Cube that one. All right. Let's see what you get. I doubt we can get 0.025 there. 13.4 squared divided by 2.6 squared divided by 8.9. Do you see the little X cubed button? You have to push shift first. Ooh, not that far. 0.038. Did you get 0.038? Did you? Oh, good. Christina got it. 0.038. That means I must have done it. That looks good. OK. Is the system at equilibrium? We're supposed to circle one or the other, Jalen. Which one would you circle? No, because it doesn't equal 0.025. OK. Which direction will the reaction shift? Crystal, what direction will it shift? Crystal, not crystal. <laughs> Monica? No way. Crystal's <laughs> absent. Yeah, you should just be crystal today. Okay, Monica. <laughs> Yeah, it's reverse. It's too big. Too much product. Good deal. Right? OK. Thank you, Crystal. OK, so that's the first type of problem, right? When they ask you, oh, are you at equilibrium or not? Set up a what C? QC. And then see if it's the same, bigger, or smaller. That's the game plan, OK? That's the first type of question. The second type of question, when given a KC, now they're giving it to you, and a whole, and a reaction, and they give you a whole bunch of stuff there, right? How can the equilibrium composition be found? They're telling you how much, you know, maybe the reactants are, or products, they're giving you some mixture. How do you find the equilibrium composition? Yeah, we'll need moles over liters to substitute in the KC. But the solution is make a blank table, then do blank. Ice. Ice. Same as last time, right? Remember, find uh, how can the equilibrium composition be found? It's ice. OK. But make a what table? What do you think they, I want to put in there? Christina, what do you think I want to put in there? Make a what table? Yeah, make the words. I should have put a blank where you get to pick. She gets to pick mole or concentration. You could see mole works, but then in the end, you get all equi equilibrium moles. Got to divide by the liters. But if you want to substitute the numbers directly from your ice table into your KC expression. Concentration would be so much easier. So uh, it's, it's kind of a small point. But life is so much easier if you divide by the liters first. And then, because very often I think, I know I forget. I go through all the work, make this nice mole table. Then I put those numbers into KC. Oh, I already screwed up. Because it has to be in concentration. So right away, I just like to put things into concentration in that ice table. Life just seems easier. OK. In a one liter vessel, three moles of chlorine, five moles of bromine are mixed. Equilibrium constants, 50. Pamela, what are the equilibrium concentrations? Ugh, what are you going to do? Ice, OK. She got the easy part. All right, let's have Gloriana fill out the initial row. Oh, I'm being nice. Why am I being nice? It's one liter. It's one liter. So what are you going to put? I don't know if that helps. Do you see where this is? Do you see why I'm being nice, Gloriana? Yeah. Because I want to put what in the table? Not moles. Molarity. Molarity. So you just divide by the liter. That's always one. So it'll be a three for the chlorine. Five for this. 
zero or a dash, whatever, right? Okay, the change row. Let's have Ashlyn change row. What would you do for that one? This right here. Negative x, negative x, and a positive 2x. And then all of our answers. Oh, let's pick on Israel. The E row, equilibrium row. Let's add them up. Just be 3. 3 minus x, right? Remember your rows. This guy's a, there's our table, right? The initial for chlorine was 3. Its change is negative x. So you're going to end up with 3 minus x. 5 minus x. Last one would be 2x. OK. Now, KC. Brittany wants us to write it out, so let's do that. I think it's a good idea, Naya. KC is going to be what over out, what over what, you know, not numbers, just the expression. BRCL. To the second, yep. Over CL2 and BR2. Good deal. Okay, what would you do next? Let's pick on Desiree. What would you do next? Yeah, I could go ahead, substitute the numbers in for me. What would you, what would you put in there? Okay. For the BRCL, I'll put in the 2x. Keep going. And then what? Oh, yeah. Thank you. 3 minus x and a 5 minus x. Now, that whole thing equals what, Bianca? It equals 50. All right. Oh, what is this like? This looks like the quiz that I was going to give you. It's just the math now. OK, let's, let's get uh, We haven't asked anything yet. Oh, Jacqueline, haven't asked you anything. How are you going to start messing with this to solve it? What are you going to do? Oh, she likes foil. Oh, fine, everybody likes foil. All right, since you're so good at foil, what are you going to... Uh, I like to just do the 3 multiply through, the negative x multiply through, but she wants to do foil, so fine. What would you end up with? She's working it out. She has x squared, negative 8x plus 15. If I multiply my 3 through, then I'm multiply. OK, that'd be a negative 3x, negative 5x. Is that right? It looks right, doesn't it? OK. All right. I believe her. Danielle, you believe her? Okay, what would you do next then? <laughs> what would you do next? Multiply what? Oh, what's the it times the 50? Yeah. Do you see what she's playing with? She's playing with those diagonals, right? She wants to get everything up on top. She said multiply this times the 50. Okay, so let's bring it up there. We'd have the 50 times x squared minus 8x plus 15 equals, what's it going to equal? Yeah, what is a 2x quantity squared? I could rewrite that as, this is a good one. Uh, go back to, what did I call you last time, Crystal? Yeah. Okay, Crystal, what, what what's 2x quantity squared? Uh, it's, um, 
four x squared. You got to square them both. Right? You got to square them both. Okay. Bonte, what do you want to do now? Oh, because what she did, see this part went up here with the 50, right? Does that make sense? Okay, so what we did is a 2x quantity squared. So you have to square the 2 and then square the x. All right, good question. If you're not sure, man, perfect, you ask, right? And plus it gets them out of saying what to do. Jacqueline, what are you going to do then? All right, so let's multiply it through. We'll have 50x squared. 50 times a negative 8 is what, negative 400? Yes. Oh, I have no clue what 50 times 15 is, though. 750, thank you, sir. Equals 4x squared. Okay. Oh. Marlena, now what? Now what? Yeah, get the negative 4x squared. You need to have 46x squared minus 400x plus 750. Ah. Equals 0. That's what we want, right? Because of that quadratic equation. Let's write it somewhere. ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. If it's in that form, b squared plus minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. There it is. OK. Now, let's, we have calculators, Gloriana. But if you want to divide through by the 46, we will. What do you want to do? Do you want to just leave it like this? Or do you want to divide through by 46? Some people like to have a 1 there, but what, what do you prefer? I like to divide She wants to divide through by 46. Yes. All right, fine. We can do that. It might make the calculator easier, but it seems like it's extra work to me. But okay, The reason why I'm asking is some people don't like to, like to have a 1 in front of the x. Oh, no, I don't care. I just plug it in. I just plug it in, too. Why go through the extra work? You have a calculator. Well, then there's, see, like right now, what is my b, for example? What is my a? My a is 46. My b is negative 400. C is that positive 750. So they're, they're big numbers inside that square root. So that kind of bothers some people. They like to deal with smaller numbers. So they would divide through by that 46. It makes everything a little bit smaller. And then, no, 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 no. Then they just have smaller A, Bs, and Cs. Then your A would be 1. Your B would be whatever 400 over 46 is. Your C would be 750 divided by 46. They just have different A, Bs, and Cs is all. You get the same answer. I say we just plug it in as is. Negative b, so we'd have 400 plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac. All that divided by, OK? I'm going to write some intermediate steps so that you can watch your calculator here and see if You don't have to write these intermediate steps, though. You can work the whole thing out. One forty-eight. Yeah. Okay, dude. Negative. Push the four hundred, the plus minus button, right? And then push the x squared to make it squared. 
So I just, see, neg see how the negative sign disappeared on you? Okay. Then minus 4 times 46 times 750 then equals. And you should get 22,000. Now you got to take the square root of him. You get about 148. What's that? N no, you, you have to you have to do this math twice. What's two times forty six? Ninety two. Oh, so yes, yeah. so you have to do the math twice, Vonta. You got to take four hundred plus one forty eight divided by ninety two, get an answer. Take four hundred minus one forty eight divided by ninety two, get an answer. Okay, did you did you get these answers? I got about 2.74 and 5.96. Okay, good. A couple people got it. Make sure you can get it. Now, if you got these numbers, see if you can get the final answers. If you didn't get them, just, just ask. I'll be glad to help you out. Sure everyone's see if you see if you can figure out you know what your X's are. Uh, so now you have Yeah, there's a question. We have two two possible X's now. That means there's multiple answers? That doesn't make sense. There can't be two possible answers. There's only one equilibrium composition. Here's our answers, right? Which one makes sense to plug in for X? Only one of them ever does. Usually it's easier because one's negative. 2.74 is the only one that makes sense. Why? Yeah, if you plug in the 5.96, look what happens to the equilibrium concentration for chlorine. You can't have a negative concentration. So that's kind of a hint that you're doing it right if only one of your answers works out. So plug in the 2.74, get all of your answers. Oh no. Well, you'll, all right, let me just, let's just finish this, then we'll talk about that. Bromine. Let's see, we have one more. We have BRCL. Now, he's just 2x. Well, 5.5. There are all of our answers. Those are all of our answers. Okay. Make sure you can get it to work out.
Mm -hmm. Okay, I took 400 plus 148, hit equals, then divide by 92. Divide by 92. Okay, that's one answer. And then you got to do minus and get the other one. Oh, because you take 3 minus the other one, mm -hmm. you get, see this one right here? Here's our answers. Mm -hmm. So you take 3 minus, where's 5.96? 5. 5. You get a negative number. You can't get negative concentrations. So it has to, your concentrations can only be positive. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's go over this one, one more time. With the, Does it make sense, the math? Right? You get these two. One more time. How did we know that this one is totally messed up? Yeah, you got to actually put it in. There's no problem with it here because you still get a positive number. 5 minus 5.96, uh, you can't get a negative concentration. 3 might, all right? If you get a, even one negative concentration screws you up here, you get 2. So you can't use him. So if you can use both numbers, you messed up somewhere. Yep. If you can't use either one, you messed up somewhere. Okay. <laughs> the, uh, the quiz in lab is pretty much just this, right? Because that's the hard part. Setting it up isn't bad. It's the math. So that's all the homework was on. And I mean, that could have been the quiz for today. It, OK, just find my x's. Okay, and that's what we're going to do in, in lab. Well, we'll probably work, practice another one of these, make sure everyone's comfortable with it, take the quiz, and then we'll do lab. OK. All righty then. Here's a concept question. Nothing to calculate, Brittany. Nothing to calculate. Solely on the basis of the value, the number of Kc. Decide whether or not you expect nearly complete reaction at equilibrium for the following reaction. What does nearly complete reaction mean? Yeah, I know. It's, I think it's kind of bad choice of words, but this is this is their English, this is their convention, this is how they say it. If nearly complete reaction means that if you dump in so much of one reactant, so much of the other, almost all of it reacts. There's hardly anything left over. Right? So at, at equilibrium, because equilibria are all over the place. Some equilibria have a whole lot of reactants left. Hardly any product. Those are really the expensive reactions, because hardly anything reacts. Right? The cheaper ones are going to be, hey, whatever you add, it pretty much all goes to product. What's the effect on Kc for a really cheap reaction? Whatever you add, bam, boom, all goes to product. Would Kc be huge or small? Huge, because Kcs are products over reactants. I always think of product. That's what I do, because it's on top. So if Kc is huge, you have a lot of product. Their way of saying that is, the reaction goes to completion. That, oh, if, if Kc is huge, the reaction goes to completion. That's how they say it. OK, so the question is, does this reaction go to completion? Is it nearly complete? You would say, yes or no, or maybe. No. no. It's, tiny. it's tiny, very tiny. It's very small. You would only answer, yes, it was 10 to the 31, right? Or a million, 10 to the 6, just a big number. That's all. That's what to completion means. You expect a big KC. So nothing to calculate on these types of questions. Hopefully you see those. But I doubt if there's a lot. They're more like this one, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So no job security. No one's going to pay you to answer questions like the previous one. OK. The equilibrium constant, Kc, for the reaction is 49 at 230. 0.4 moles each of phosphorus, fresh chloride, and chlorine are added to a 4-liter reaction vessel. What's the equilibrium composition of the mixture at 230 degrees Celsius? So Brittany, I didn't, I've been picking on you a lot today. I don't know why. Just, your name's right in the middle. Is this an ice problem? Yes. What makes you say yes? 
Yes, that's right. No. Asking for what? Equilibrium composition. At the very end, you have to draw a big box around this stuff. Concentration of PCl3 equals something, right? Cl2 equals something. PCl5 equals something. Right? You should have big M's on them so you don't lose any points. Those are your answers. The only way to get it is ice, right? So set up an ice table, but be careful with that initial row, right? Because I strongly suggest making a concentration table and not a mole table. You can make a mole table if you want, but then make sure you divide by the liters before you substitute into KC. Mole table is just using the moles in the initial row. Yeah, in the, in the I row, but I say just plug in concentrations. So just always do it that way. Just always make a concentration table. Life is so much easier. Let's see if you can work it out. If you're not sure where to start here. Yeah, so you have ice. Put in the initial amount, and it's in units of molarity, moles over liters. So in this one, to get concentration, it has to be the moles divided by the liters. And that's what you put in fry. Now, don't, don't forget, you got to divide by the liters, though, because you want to make a concentration table. So you divide all the initial moles by the initial liters. So 0.4 moles over 4 liters. So before you start really digging in on this math and get going here, let's make sure everyone's plugging in the right stuff. Otherwise, someone's going to get mad. OK. Pamela, what did you put in for the I row? Point 0.1 for PCL3? What would you put for CL2? Same thing, then zero. Now I can erase. Is she right? Do you agree? Yes. Mm -hmm. She took the moles, divided them by the liters, and plugged that stuff in. And why does she have a point 0.1 under the CL2 and not a zero? Instead of each. Yeah, you kind of got to read kind of slowly. Each. Very good. So this will be 0.1 minus x. This is 0.1 minus x. Because what was you have to plug in molarity, big M. And big M was what over what? Do you remember the equation? Moles over liters. So they told you moles. They also told you liters. So you have to find the concentration of PCl3, the concentration of Cl2. It's always going to be moles over liters. So 0.4 moles over four liters. Yeah, phosphorus trichloride is this one. And, well, they, they say each, 4, 0.4 moles each of this. So you have to do 0.4 for each one. Yeah, they didn't say they had any of them there initially, so you just put a zero. They could have. If they did, you just put it in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For this, this is PCL, there's only one. It's just X at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. 
this guy's just zero plus x is x. All right? There's no point one or anything. Just zero plus x. This is just x down there. So, so then in this expression, and this has to be products over reactants. You have this flipped. It's products over reactants. So hopefully you have, as far as what I've got up there, should agree. Oh, there's, oh no, because look in your KC expression. It's just products over reactants. And where did you, well, we kind of skipped it. See, maybe you should do what Brittany was saying. See, if you write the KC expression, just PCL5 all over the other two, we're not squaring the PCL5 or anything. So you just put in what he is. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. There's, that's why there's so many different permutations of the same question. Yeah, multiply. Bring that up there with the 49. Yeah, and all you're doing is subtracting the x. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, negative. You'd have a negative 0.2x. Yeah. And then. Over, that's over x. Yeah, but here though, you have x times x is x squared. Oh, okay. Is it a positive x? Yes, because it's negative. Yeah, neg negative. yeah, yeah. It would be a positive x squared. Exactly. You end up with just a negative x. It's going to take away from Yeah, but a negative x. This is negative 9.8x. So that's going to be a negative 10.8x. If you end up with, if, if that's a negative 9.8, I'm not sure. Oh, Marcus has a negative 9.8 too. Should be right. Did I foil right? 0 0.01 minus 0.2x plus x squared. OK, good. Thank you very much. Oh, then we met. Then you messed up somewhere. You messed up somewhere. So, uh, yep.
right? So for your A, B, and C, did you get 49, negative 10.8, and 0.49? Did you get those for your A, B, and C? Good. Okay. Keep going. Point four nine is going to be positive, right? Because see how you take. See, I can't reach that high. When you take this guy times the forty nine, you get a forty nine times a positive point oh one, and then forty nine times a negative point two, forty nine times a positive. No, on A, B, and C, they're both positive. B is a negative ten point eight. A and C are positive. Yep. What did you get for your x's? I got 0 0.157. 0 0.157. And 0 0.064. Did anybody else get those for their x's? What did you get? She got the 0 0.064, but not the 0 0.157. OK. I don't know. Let me just figure it out then. I was hoping we could get a consensus. I actually have to do something. 10.8 plus 4.54 equals that. Divide by 98. I got 0.156. Did you say that, Gloriana? Ooh, she's a, okay. Is that what you said? <laughs> All right. So you should get these. Now, I think a common mistake is not to hit equals after you take 10.8 plus 4.54. Hit equals before you divide by the 98. I think that's a common mistake. And only one of these is going to work, and that's which one? 0.064. So you plug in, plug in these guys to get your answers. Right. Plug that 0.064 all the way end up here. And those answers will go in there. Right? So we're about out of time, but I'll be glad.